Hey everybody, welcome to Outtake ESL. Uh, today I want to go over a presentation I made uh, based on pirates. Uh, this one I did for adults. And it was originally a part of uh, Wall Street English uh, parties. Uh, Wall Street English we were required to give parties every month. And what that meant was it wasn't really based on English fluency. It was just kind of based on having fun based around an, a topic. <laughs> and all the language was to be, meant to be incidental for the most part. And, uh, you know, you could do things like Minute to Win, and I found like in those, and it's also, you know, that's also a good idea if anybody's looking for ideas for games and things like that. Minute to Win at games, if you can find ones that you can incorporate language into it, it's, those are a great place, a great resource for ideas. Uh, but this was, a, this was a party originally that we did, I did for Wall Street English on Pirates. It was a time when uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, the movie series, had just been released. I've always been a big fan of the, the ride at Disney World and uh, the whole mythos behind Pirates and uh, Buccaneers. And so uh, it was a lot of fun for me to put this one together. I put a lot of time to it and I did really well. And this is kind of one of the um, presentations that I did that really left... Uh, kind of it ended up being kind of controversial for in terms of the reception it received um, from the management of Wall Street English. It kind of really drove a wedge between me, um, my, um, my ability to do well with that company and the perception of the work I was sort of contributing as opposed to um, their valuation of it. And it was really one of the turning points where I said, these people are just not being fair to me. They're just kind of stealing, stealing value of this stuff all the time. And after I put an energy and put it, they're not, they're not being reciprocal with that. They're just kind of undermining it for whatever reason, trying to skip a generation or whatever. But uh, they didn't want to give me the recognition for the kind of work I was doing. And this is one of the prime examples of that. Now, just to kind of put that into reference, here's, and this is kind of was a typical. PPT that they would do, that we, they would give us to, uh, to do for the classroom. And it was very simplistic, you know, it was erstwhile, you know, I got the job done. But I was a person, you know, if you're going to give me the opportunity to, to exhibit my talents, I was going to bring this to the table. And it was exceptional. I mean, this, this was just a great, fun time, you know. I, I, and I, for the party, I went to, you know, I went you know, above and beyond. I, I made, uh, put seaweed on the tables. I, I got all coconut milk and uh, sort of um, like coconut shells and uh, pirate outfits and things like that, dressed up as a pirate. So it was really a tremendous effort on my part that I just felt was consciously, purposefully being on the mind and kind of stealing the value of all the energy and time I had put into it. So let me go through with you. This actually is, uh, later I worked at Met in English, which was a good place. They allowed me to really sort of um, exhibit my talents and they at least started to give me a little more recognition than Wall Street English was, was purposefully doing. Um, once again, I, I reiterate that that was a very political climate at Wall Street English and, and they, had sort of, they had sort of ulterior motives in, in sort of not recognizing this work. Uh, it starts off here. off for the pirates and uh, I kind of did this very elaborate introduction so here I would uh, before as, as people are settling in this would all be running on the screen play a very pirate song in the background you can hear it the Jolly Roger there and from there we went to this, and I came out in my pirate outfit, not for Met in English, not when I did it as an English corner, but at the party I came out in my par pirate outfit. And we did this song together. I had my guitar, and, and we did the, probably the most famous uh, pirate song there is, a song called Dere Dere Derelict, you know, 15 men and a bottle of rum. Uh, 15 men on a dead man's chest and a bottle of rum. Roho and a bottle of rum. It's the one they use in the Disney ride also, so we all sang that together. And then we went to a discussion, and here, you know, I went to the, to the extent to try and use the language, you know, because I thought it was kind of a fun idea, a different aspect of the English language, using this little pirate language. I thought it was very crucial to the topic. 
And then I gave a short history. And so I get a handout here of uh, this passage here, which kind of gives you a general idea of what we're going to be talking about in piracy. A little bit of a discussion there. And then, well, what does a pirate wear? What does a pirate look like? So we do this, we go through the vocabulary. I go back. Go through the pirate vocabulary. Now, with the, um, with the party, at this point, I was given a budget of money. I spent a lot of my own money, but um, we were given a budget of money. And so I was able to buy a bunch of supplies. And what I had everybody do, each team, is to do your best dressed pirate. You know, who can dress up as the best pirate? I was already dressed as a pirate myself with the eye patch and the, the headband. Um, and then I gave them, I put it over to them, and, and we had a little contest and prize who could do it. For the Met in English, the English corner, I skipped over that. Because um, that's, the English corner is meant to be a little more intensive, language intensive. Uh, then I had this uh, treasure map. Uh, here I was giving, I gave them all a treasure map, and it was kind of locations described on the treasure map. They weren't shown on a map or anything, it was just described, and they had to go around the uh, facility, the school, and they had to uh, get a selfie of them at the certain spot. And I think it was like, you know, the fire extinguisher or something, something to put the fire out, something like that. And then they all came back and showed what they had. Let's see what it was. You know, they'll hold up their phones to see if it was good, 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 good. Anybody got it wrong, they kind of got points off. And we came to this exercise. And this is one of my favorite exercises that I, that I put together. I had a lot of fun with this. <laughs> Took a lot of work, but uh, it's all using pirate language, so I had to find uh, I had to find audio clips of people using pirate language. I found a great resource, and I used it through my sound editing software. I use um, Audacity, great program. It's free. Uh, I would recommend it to anybody who's looking to do some sound, simple sound edits uh, and uh, transitions and things like that. Audacity is a really good program. I use that, and I put together this. All right, so our Jolly Roger talks to us and gives us this pi a pirate phrase, ahoy matey. And then I describe, uh, first, ahoy matey. First I tell him everybody what it means, what does ahoy mean? It's hello, my friend. And then I, to make it kind of an activity, I said, when you hear this phrase, you have to respond and like and wave your hand and greeting, ahoy matey, right? And we go through a bunch of different, Abasti. I put on my pirate. Put on my pirate voice also. Roll me down. This means oh no. And I said, when you hear this, you should put your hand on your head and say, Yar. Alright. So we all did that. I went through all the, the all the vocabulary and all the motions they're supposed to do. Till you get to Alright. So you get to this slide here, and here's where the Jolly Roger is talking to us, and you have to remember to respond correctly. You respond correctly, and it's the booty for you. you respond incorrectly, and you're walking a blank, scurvy dog. All right? So, uh, oh. the yo-ho-ho, -ho, you have to remember what, uh, what the gesture was. Uh, or you got to walk the plank. And I actually had a plank at this point. I had a board and I had a spritzer. And <laughs> they walked the plank. And I just got hit him with a spritzer as we walked the plank. I remember that now. It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun with this. And, I, you know, it just was so upsetting when they turned around and made it like, was it even fun? You know, they, they actually went to their, out of their way to insult it. You know, like they had, I showed you those other PPTs. That was the typical Wall Street teachers like party, party PPT, right? And they would do photos of, oh my God, everybody having fun, and this guy's so cool, we love this guy. Of course, they're all the younger people. Oh, it's so much fun, blah, 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 you know? And then, like, when I did this, they, did not, they didn't show any pictures of it or anything. And they actually put the question, was it any fun, or did you have fun? Kind of, and I was, like, so angry. They were just turning it into a barroom brawl at that point. You know, you were just hit, they were trying to hit me, you know? They were trying to hurt me, and that's what I didn't like about Wall Street English. They were just, you know, out there to hurt me. And, uh... 
Now this I did only with men. Uh, like I said, it wasn't a party, it was an English course, so I had one of the ESL library discussions, uh, and I sort of formatted it here for this, for this presentation, and it was on music piracy. So uh, you give them a handout, along with that handout there's some Along with a handout, there's some vocabulary. Um, because it's an English corner, you have various proficiencies, and you shouldn't really worry about that because the whole idea is to have people working together. So maybe you'll have somebody with a high proficiency working with a low intermediate proficiency. All working together to kind of use the language. And I had another exercise here, true or false, and A and B. Um, just kind of say if it was true or false. Say a statement, do you think it's true? Why is it true? Why is it not false based on the passage? Now this exercise here, I didn't do it with the, that's how I pretty much wrapped up the English corner. With the party, I had these two activities planned out. One was a duel, a swashbuckle. And uh, here was your just basic fencing. I had, uh, you know, uh, I had plastic swords. And uh, I actually went through and Gave points for every touch, gave them so many times. And I said, on guard, you get ready to fart. Basic fencing. And the last activity was a tug of war. So maybe if I had four teams, I actually had a rope and we had a tug of war. And uh, that's uh, had a prize for whoever won that. And that was the pirate, uh, the pirate uh, presentation that I did. Once again, a lot of fun. This is the, uh, this is the contest for the pirate, uh, dress up as a pirate. So I would have that after the other slide. This is just some extra, extra Jolly Roger stuff. So that was my presentation on pirates. I hope it gets you some ideas. If you uh, would like this, this material, please uh, write so in the comments section. Drop me a line. Also, drop me a line if you like, uh, if you like what you're seeing here. Click like, subscribe. I'd love to be able to monetize these videos. Maybe get back some of that value. I kind of felt they were kind of steal from me by uh, not recognizing how good it was. Uh, if you like it, please let me know. I, I really think it's, it's, uh, it's something you don't see in the ESL field uh, very often, and I'm happy to do it. You know, I'm happy to see everybody having a good time, you know, but like that's no reason to turn around and hit me, hit me below the belt or hit me, you know, take cheap shots at me. But anyway, talk to you later, more to come. Uh, click like, subscribe and um, stay cool.